Hey, what's up guys, it's Ben here, and welcome back to a hands-on introduction to computer programming. This is episode 6, and in today's episode we are finally going to be talking about those functions that we keep working with, but I keep refusing to actually address. So we're going to be talking about those. In the last episode, we talked about loops and repetition. Uh, the functions are very kind of similar to loops in that they lower the size of a program by quite a bit um, by making it so that you do not have to keep writing the same code over and over and over again. So all of these are basically just time-saving uh, features of computer programming languages. So we're going to go ahead and get started with a function. A function is a named block of code. Now this block of code generally takes in a value, usually, well actually almost always, uh, does something with the value that it takes in, and then usually it returns some uh, modified value uh, generally affected by the input value. So we've actually already seen functions before, uh, and right now I'm actually inside of one. I'm inside of the main function. So C++ requires you to have a function titled main, otherwise your application will not uh, compile here. And functions, just like uh, all kinds of variables, have a type to them. So the main function in C++ is of type int. And this basically, the main function, what it returns, which in this case we've always been returning zero, but the main function will always return some variable, some value to the operating system that will basically tell the operating system, okay, did the program work correctly or was there an error? Some operating systems will do something with that value. Um, I know, I think Windows uh, works with the return value of some installer applications uh, to tell if an application was installed correctly. Um, but I, I really haven't seen a whole lot of use with return functions in terms of operating systems. But that's what the return function or what the uh, return value for the main function is used for uh, generally. So making a function in C++ is pretty easy. Uh, what you're going to want to do is, I, I always like to put all of my functions above the main function, uh, just so that I know where the main function always is in my application. So the way that you make a function is you first declare the type, just like a normal uh, variable. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to do an integer here. And then you put in the name of your function. So uh, a common placeholder name is foo, for example. And the thing that separates a normal variable from a function is these two opening and closing parentheses here. This tells the compiler that this object that we're working with right here, this foo, this is definitely a function, not a variable. Uh, then what you would want to do to actually open up the function and start writing in it uh, is do the curly braces here like we did with if statements, for example. Now it is incredibly important that if you have a return type, so in this case we have the return type of integer, that's the type of the function, it's incredibly important that you actually do have a return function or a return statement in your function. So in this case we're just going to return uh, the value 5 for example. So we have our function here called foo and it returns the value of 5 but the only way that we can actually get foo to execute is by doing something called a function call. So to do this in uh, our main function here if we want to call the function foo what we would do is we would just type in foo and then opening and closing parentheses and then of course semicolon. Now if I were to compile this there we go and run you can see it doesn't print anything out uh, or do anything that we think um, because we don't have any kind of see out statement but if we put one in here so if we did see out around foo our function call here and we compile and run that, you can see that we get the value of 5. Now it doesn't have to necessarily be 
um, just some function that returns a value whatever static value you put in there. What we can do is we can make the function uh, work with input values, what are called parameters and arguments. So a parameter is what you would give a function um, to what information you would give the function uh, to manipulate or to uh, just use in order to determine its uh, its results. So uh, for C++ to put in a parameter into a function declaration uh, like we have here for foo, what you would do is you would put in first the type of the uh, parameter. So in this case we're just going to put in another int and then you're going to put in the placeholder name that will be used inside of the function body regardless of the uh, value of the parameter. So we're going to say bar. That's another common uh, placeholder name. So what we'll do is, um, yeah, you know what, let's, let's just return, not bark, let's just return bar here. And then down here in our function call, we'll just give it the value 7 for the argument. The uh, parameter is what is in the function declaration. The argument is what you put into a function call. So if we go ahead and compile that, you can see that it returns the value 7 from foo, which is then put into the cout statement and printed out into our terminal down here. Now there's another kind of uh, function concept called overloading. So right here we have our function uh, foo of type integer here. It's a normal function that takes one uh, parameter here, which we call bar. But if we just wanted foo to return whatever we wanted to without putting in a parameter here, what we can do is just make another function called foo that does not have any kind of parameters here. So the way that we would do that is we would just do int foo again and then just not take a parameter this time. And then we can return uh, the value 4 for example. So then if we came down here and we just called foo without any arguments and we compile and run that, you can see that we get 7 for our first cout statement here because that's what we give uh, the function in our argument. So that's running this function, but this function call, because it has no arguments, it is running this version of the function which returns the variable, or the value rather, of 4 here. Finally, there are functions that can do absolutely, or can only do things um, and not return or take in any value. And those functions are of type void in C++. So a void function does not return anything. It can take parameters, um, but it does not return anything at all. So it does not need to have a return statement. Um, so we're just going to call this, uh, we're just going to call it dog, why not? And then we're just going to put a cout statement in here. Actually, you know what, let's take in a parameter, integer x. There we go, if I can actually manage to type correctly. And so now, if we tried to do cout dog4, for example, and we compiled that, you can see that we're getting an error here. It says forming reference to void, error forming reference to void. Um, and that's just because the function is of type void, so it doesn't return anything, so we, c we have nothing to put into this cout statement here. So the way that we would actually get the function to run is if we just did the function call on its own line here. So if we compile, if I can get this, there we go. Now if we compile and run it, it uh, prints out couts4, which is in the function itself. Now functions can take multiple parameters here that are separated by commas. So if we actually, let's just rename this to int dog and int cat. And then if we wanted to manipulate those two, maybe like an addition function, for example, uh, we would do return dog plus cat. And then coming down here, what we would do is uh, separate the arguments themselves by commas again. Now you can see that genie pops up a little uh, T a hint kind of thing here, a uh, tooltip here, that tells us the uh, parameters that the function takes, and it even tells us the names. In this case, our names d 
don't really mean much at all, like dog, cat, that's not very helpful. Normally, you would want to have a more meaningful name in there. But we can do for two, and then do endl, compile, and run it, and you can see it gives us the value uh, that we put in four and two, and adds them together to give us six. In Python, writing functions is a little bit different than in C++. So the way that you would write a function is you would not actually put in the return type in the function declaration, because remember, uh, Python is it's dynamically typed, all of the ty like the data types are completely ambiguous, which is kind of frustrating sometimes, um, but it makes things a little bit more simple for us. So the way that you would open up a function is you would just type the word def, and then you would type the name of the function, so we're just going to do foo again, and then any parameters you would put in your parentheses, you would just put the name of them, so for example, uh, bar. And then of course you have that uh, colon there, and then, you know, if I wanted to just print out bar, I can also return from here as well. So I can do, you know, bar times two. There we go. And then I can do uh, foo. Actually, I should probably print foo. And then we'll do four here. And if we run this, you can see we have a print function here, or a print statement here that prints out the four that we gave the function. So that's right here. And then the return statement bar times two. Uh, is 8, so it prints out uh, from this line 5 statement right here. One other thing I want to point out about uh, Python is it does not have function overloading, at least not simply at very least. So we have two functions here, both named foo. Uh, one takes an argument, the other does not. And then we have our print statement down here that uh, does a function call to foo. And if we try to run this, oops, if we try to run this, uh, we'll get an error saying that foo takes no arguments uh, because this version of the function uh, basically overwrote this one right here. So to Python, this does not exist anymore, and this is our function. So there is no overloading uh, functions in Python. And that's basically it. That is the basics of functions. Uh, they're really pretty simple, but incredibly useful um, and incredibly uh, powerful. Uh, to make your applications a lot smaller. You really don't want to write the same line of code over and over and over again, unless, of course, it's a function call. So that's what functions can do uh, for you and your programs. It can make them a lot smaller and a lot easier to read, and a lot more organized, of course. And that's all I've got. Thank you guys for watching. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about classes and objects and a little introduction to object-oriented programming, which will be cropping up a lot as you continue uh, your programming career. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Peace.